Welcome to the tentative last part of this series. Hopefully you've been able to follow along all right, and now we can finally implement our interpreter. Let's start by simply adding an abstract method to our node class. And let's call it interpret. The way we've done things so far will allow each individual expression to interpret itself. And so we don't need one bloated file with interpretation logic for every piece of grammar that we have. Instead, we just have to have a little bit of boilerplate, but as a trade-off, our nodes can interpret and construct themselves. Let's start with our primary expression. Specifically, let's start with our number. Our number is pretty simple. There's only two cases we have to consider. We know that this is a primary node, so we have access to self.token. And what we want to check is, is there a decimal place in this string? And if so, we want to return the float cast of the string. Otherwise, we want to return the int cast of the string. Now, we can simplify this a little bit. You see that there's a lot of repetition with this. Instead, we can say, use the float class, if this is true, otherwise use the int class, and then call the constructor. And so this is just a little simpler. Now we can implement the rest of our primary expressions. We're going to need certain functions in Python. So let's start by coming up here and importing from math. We need floor and seal. And what we can do is get the value from our expression by calling interpret on it. And then we can match the bracket type. Be sure to say dot string on left. And if it is a parentheses, we simply return the value. If it is an absolute value expression, we can call abs. If it is a floor bracket, we can call floor. And of course, if it is a seal bracket, we can call seal. As you can see, interpreting is relatively simple. All we're doing is getting the value into Python, into our code from the string, and then we're just performing Python operations on it. And the value will be cascaded all the way up the tree until we get a final result. Next, we can go into our unary expressions, define interpret, and once again, we have an expression, so let's interpret that expression. And since we have three operators, let's compare our operator string. If we have a unary plus, that's a no op. It doesn't actually do anything, so we just return value. Here you could say plus value, but it doesn't do anything, so there isn't really a point. If there's a minus, we return the negative value. And if there is a round operator, we can call round. Notice that we don't need to have a default case here because we are constructing these operators and there's no way to have some other operator in here. And if there is, it's just undefined behavior. Now we can go to our exponential expressions. And here we have two expressions, a left and a right. So left is self.left.interpret. Right is self.right.interpret. There's only one exponential operator, so all we have to do is return left to the power of right. In fact, I'll just keep this on three lines. The interpretation logic, like I said, is really simple. It is very easy to implement an interpreter. If you wanted to implement a transpiler or a compiler, instead of cascading up a value, you would have some sort of text which would eventually be written to a file. Now we have our multiplicative expression. 
we have a left and a right again. But now we have three different operators, so let's check. If it is multiplication, we just return left times right. If it's division, we return left divide right. As you can see, once again, it's a very simple process. But it's only so simple because everything we've done up to this point has enabled it to be simple. By keeping all these classes, it just makes everything so much simpler. All we have left is an additive expression. We have a left and a right. And since we only have two cases here, instead of using a match statement, I'll just use a ternary operator. We will return left minus right if our operator has a minus, otherwise we will return left plus right. Now if we come into main, instead of printing our tokens in our tree, let's print tree.interpret. You personally may want to add some sort of utility to allow you to print out the tokens and the tree. We did put a lot of work into making those look nice, and they can be very useful for debugging, but that's up to you. Now, if we run our interpreter, I thought I misspelled that. 10. Negative negative 10 is 10. How about we use some of our custom syntax? The floor of 3.14 plus 1.0 is 4, because you do the addition first and get 4.14, and then we floor it. What if instead we seal it? We get 5, just as we would expect. If we round 5.5, .5, we get 6. If we round 5.4, we get 5. And our language seems to be working exactly as we expect it to. The operator precedence should be correct, so long as your nodes are constructed correct, which is a reason why printing out the tree can be very useful for debugging. For example, we already would know that this expression should print correctly. And we can test that if we come into our Python console and try the same thing. And we get the exact same number because we have the exact same precedence as Python. Lastly, once again, how about we try the first expression that we use as an example. And we get three. So our language is complete. From here, you could add any features that you wish. You could change up the logic. You could read from a file and then calculate based on source code from that file. You could write these results to a file. Anything that you want. It's your language. If you would like me to continue this series and maybe create a more advanced language, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you learned something. See ya.